Hey, Christian Working Moms, this is Anita uh, with The Ripple Effect, and this is episode two of my podcast, and today we're going to talk about uh, mom guilt. So mom guilt, ladies, like this is a thing for us, right? And I think if we break down mom guilt, um, there's a couple of places where it can come from. We can have mom guilt that um, as working moms who are trying to have a healthy marriage and intentionally raise our kids and just do right by our family um, as a working mom, we can run into the situation where maybe our mom guilt is coming from ourselves. And so maybe I'm working all day long, but I really want to be home with our uh, with my kids. So I was totally in that season, especially when my kids were little. I remember sitting on conference calls and hearing my kids play outside and literally ladies like putting my phone on mute and crying as I could hear my kids playing. And really it was my, my heart was in a spot where I wanted to be outside playing with them, um, but I was inside working and somebody else was really playing with my kids and entertaining my kids. And so that was like a self-imposed mom guilt where I wanted to be somewhere other than where I was um, and I, I had to work through that. I had to be able to reconcile that. I had to figure those pieces out. And we'll talk about um, some ways that we can uh, come up with some solutions for that. So the second area that we can have mom guilt is um, it can come from outside sources, maybe family members or maybe... Um, uh, yeah, let's start there. So maybe family members. So maybe you have family members around you who are saying things like, you know, you really should do this, but you're not and that kind of stuff. And so my old pastor used to say, like, let's not should on people. Um, but that happens oftentimes when we hear people say, um, I really should be doing something different than what I'm doing. And yet for those of us that are called into the workforce and out into industry, and as believers, we know like, God, this is where you've called us. We've heard from you. We um, know that we are called to be in the workforce, whether we want to or we need to, whatever that looks like in your household. And then in that, um, the guilt that can come from other people um, is it can be really, really heavy. And so some ways to navigate that is to shift your perspective. Um, and so instead of um, tuning my ears to hear the guilty statements like I really should be doing this, I should be doing that. It's going back for me and I hope for you, it's going back to God and saying, God, what did you remind me? What were the promises that you gave me that if I go and do these things or as I go and do these things, um, I trust that you're going to cover my family. I trust that you're going to love us in the midst of this. I trust that my kids are going to learn what it like, what it looks like as a believer to go and be responsible and go to work and be prosperous. And so um, in that, like it's really turning away from the people that are, that are giving me the should statements and really turning towards God and what he's promised for me. So the other area that oftentimes that we can feel mom guilt, and actually you can, I've talked to ladies on both sides of the fence, we hear this on both sides, is sometimes in the church we can have mom guilt and there's like these two camps, right? There's the stay-at-home moms and they can have a perspective and then there are the working moms and they can have a different perspective. And sometimes those two groups of women, ironically, inside the church, like they can guilt each other for one for staying home and not working and one for going out and doing work and man i've talked to so many gals over the years and clients in that space and it's a real thing like it's a real thing inside the church um so that led me to really kind of study god's word and um and the for me what i heard and what i've found with clients is that the the mom guilt sounds something like this like somehow what I'm doing is not, and being able to go to work and provide for my family is not my ministry or it's less of a ministry than if I was a stay at home mom. Those are the things that I heard when I was, my kids were really little. And those are the things most commonly that I found when I work with um, working moms. Um, and so what we find in that is, gosh, if you just crack open your Bible and look at the Proverbs woman, man, this lady is industrious. 
she's working hard because remember the messaging that we're hearing sometimes as working moms is somehow if I go and because I either want to or I need to either one of those go and work outside my house somehow that's less godly somehow it's like a I don't know like weird things like it's a secular decision it's not a spiritual decision there's nowhere in the word that says that by the way so let me just free you right there for those of you that are struggling with that and feeling that guilt um, that's not from God uh, so the other thing is when we study the Proverbs woman man, this lady she's industrious she rules her household she provides enough not just for her household but for her staff she has people around her that are doing a phenomenal job supporting her and her business supporting her husband supporting her kids supporting her industry all that kind of stuff um she is she's working hard she's not lazy and Proverbs goes on and lists all these character traits of a lady who is absolutely an entrepreneur and and doing a phenomenal job at um, at working and providing for her family. As a matter of fact, when you look at the verses, the progression of the verses, what happens is you see that that's why her husband and her children rise up to call her blessed is because she's industrious. She's a hard worker. She's an entrepreneur and she's really figuring things out in all these different areas whether she's um, it's in clothing or textiles or uh, trading with the merchant ships and all that kind of stuff there's all these different um, sections of business that she's involved in uh, that are talked about in that scripture in proverbs 31 and then her family rises up to call her blessed it's not because she's lazy um, it's not because she is frankly it's not because she's just staying home, but she's actually getting out and doing stuff. And so again, hopefully that is um, an encouragement. It's meant to be really an encouragement for those of you that are in that working mom space because you want to or you need to be in that space. Just know like God can do amazing things when we're out in industry uh, just and that can be our ministry in addition to the other areas where we can have ministries. Um, Okay, what else about mom guilt? So we talked about uh, when it comes from internally, when it comes from external sources, and then those two groups in between. You know what, ladies, the interesting thing is I've talked to the stay-at-home moms over the years. They feel the same thing. They feel mom guilt from a different perspective. They feel like the working moms don't always necessarily understand the perspective of where God has called them to be stay-at-home moms and not go out into industry. And so I just think that there's room for grace and there's room for both and there's room for understanding on each of those sides to be able to, to support one another. So if there's one takeaway, I just, I love takeaways. I love to be able to grow and mature and take some information that either my coach or someone or I read, some the word um, gives me some good, uh, wisdom and I love to be able to put it into practice so if your takeaway as your takeaway today it's really kind of understanding and praying about and listening and thinking and then journaling what areas do you feel like you're being oppressed down by guilt and it, again it could be coming from you it could be coming from outside sources it could be coming from just social media whatever but start to identify that and then once you can identify where the mom guilt's coming from, figure out a way to eradicate that. And the way that I do that is I, once I'm aware that I'm believing a lie, because remember all these things that we're talking about in the mom guilt category, they're absolutely a lie from our enemy. That somehow we're not good enough. Somehow we don't have enough. Somehow we're not equipped to walk in the things that God has for us. And that's just not true, ladies. And so um, as we wrap up this episode, my encouragement for you is to identify where do you feel mom guilt in your life right now? And then what are you going to do about it? What lie is kind of under the surface there that's not a tr so it's not a truth from God? And then, um, then take some of God's word and declare it over yourself. Read the Proverbs woman regardless of what you do every single day read that over yourself take the verses and plug your name in to each of those areas in scripture that say no and you know what 
Like Anita is this, Anita is industrious. Anita is a entrepreneur. Anita is, um, she's taking care of her household. Anita is loving and caring and guiding um, all the people in her household. And take God's word and apply it to your own life. And I will tell you, that will set you free in a way that you might not even be able to imagine right now. Okay, so that's it for today. Our topic was mom guilt. Your takeaway from today is identify where you are feeling mom guilt. And then if you, I'd love to hear from you. So either message me directly or share it in the comments down below. And then um, let's connect. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to talk to you ladies. Just know each and every lady that's listening, whenever you're listening, I'm praying for you every single day that you would know who you are and whose you are and that you'd be able to walk in your proper identity in Christ each and every day as you go forward. Okay, go out and be blessed.